Good morning, Faith Bible Chapel. It's great to be with you again today, worshiping with you, um, regardless of where you are, whether you're at home or, or at families. Um, we're separated, but again, as we've said before, we're separated, but we're together. We're together in the love and the presence of God, and we can rejoice in that. Um, today, uh, we've got a song for you and uh, actually a special special uh, message from somebody else um, just a little hello uh, that we'll share in a minute but to open with uh, I'm going to read to you from Psalm 96 sing to the Lord a new song sing to the Lord all the earth sing to the Lord and praise his name proclaim his salvation day after day declare his glory among the nations his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nation are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O family of nations, O, uh, o family of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant in everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for He comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in His truth. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You and praise You for our time together. We thank You and praise You, Father, that you are the Lord God Almighty, that you love us, that you care for us, that you have redeemed us through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Father, that you help us to grow in your love and your faithfulness through the power of the Holy Spirit. May we rejoice in that. May we give thanks to you for that. May, Father, may we live for you and love you in sincerity and truth, yielding every aspect of our lives to You. So strengthen us today, Lord. Guide us as we have fellowship together, even though it's apart. And may we praise Your holy name. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. One of the reasons I, I read Psalm 96 is apparently uh, last Wednesday was Earth Day. And... You know, that's a good thing up to a point. Um, there are real issues that we face environmentally, real issues, real concerns. Um, but often we kind of let that become an idol to us. Uh, it's important not to worship the war, the earth, um, but instead to reflect on its wonder uh, and its intricacies and really how in the workings of nature... Um, it reflects the glory of God. The glory of God and the majesty of God. So think about that today. You know, as you go for a walk, as you look out the window, reflect on the majesty of God and the wonder of God and that this is the God who cares for us and who loves us. So, that being said, we have a short song or a song, um, How Great Thou Art, uh, by or as sung by Chris Rice. So enjoy.
I look forward to the time that we as a church can worship together again, um, led by our music teams, our worship teams. Um, It's always wonderful to listen to somebody else sing, but it's wonderful to be able to be led and sing all together um, and rejoice as a congregation and worship God together that way. So we look forward to that. Let's be praying for that time, that that time will come soon, um, that our governor, um, our leaders, uh, our, our, our medical folks will have wisdom in, in uh, guiding us and giving us direction uh, to be able to break free of this pandemic um, so that we can come back together and worship and rejoice in your love as a congregation together. Um, real quickly now, uh, I do have a, we have a little message. We had a surprise guest this morning uh, who would like to share a little something with you. So here we go. All right, it's good to see you guys, at least through the lens of media here. Um, I'm excited to have a day off. So this is my first day that I have been able to not have to report in a couple weeks. So I was able to come up last night and spend the time with my family and then uh, come in this morning just to be able to give you an update on how I'm doing, also kind of a word of encouragement uh, to the congregation. And uh, I certainly do miss our time together, being able to see each other in person, and we're looking forward to soon, uh, hopefully very soon, being able to meet again and uh, being able to fellowship uh, person to person and worship the Lord together. Uh, But I'm also thankful that uh, God has put in our place here uh, in this church people that are capable and willing uh, to continue to work and to be able to bring the Word of God and uh, be able to at least fellowship together um, through the lens of media, and we're thankful for that. I also encourage you to still uh, remain diligent in communicating with each other. I know it's been several weeks since we've met, but uh, if there's needs or concerns, reach out to the leadership of the church, and I'm sure that uh, we'll do the best we can to assist you. Uh, as many of you know, I've been in Massachusetts now for a couple of weeks and uh, have been uh, down there assisting the National Guard with uh, uh, various different things. And uh, it's been a challenging couple of weeks. And Lord willing, there's only about two more weeks left. And uh, there's a potential for a little bit longer, but I'm, I'm looking forward to potentially being done in two weeks and getting back to a uh, more normal stream of life. And uh, with that in mind, I'm also very thankful for those that have uh, stopped by, checked on uh, my wife and kids, and and really made sure everything was good for them, and, and the care you've shown for them is, is greatly appreciated. I would say continue to pray for those around you, those that are ill, those that uh, uh, maybe have loss of jobs or loss of loved ones, and uh, just keep them in your prayers. And we look forward to, as the weather warms up and things get nice, uh, being able to meet again. And uh, we're thankful for what God's going to do, and we're thankful for each and every one of you. I keep you in my thoughts often in my prayers, and uh, I'd appreciate as you pray for the leadership of the church and one another that we can really be unified as a body together with Christ, and we're looking forward to that. And uh, if you don't mind, what I'll do is I'll pray now and uh, uh, just kind of uh, come to the Lord together in a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, we do thank you for how good you are and how wonderful you are. And, uh, Lord, we are uh, in a challenging time where, uh, Lord, we miss the presence of each other physically. And uh, we're thankful that we're unified in, in our spirits, Lord. We're unified in the same desire, and that is to worship you and to serve you. And, Lord, we, uh, we love you and we're thankful for your son, Jesus Christ. And that's the reason, Lord, that we're able to be unified, the reason we're able to come together. And God, I ask that you would uh, be with those in the congregation that are experiencing financial burdens. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, alleviate those, Lord. I pray that you would uh, retain jobs where possible, Lord. I pray that you'd be with those that are experiencing loss of loved ones, either through death, Lord, or just through um, absence. We pray that you would comfort them and assure them, Lord, that um, there is uh, a, a coming a time, Lord, when there's no more separation. And Lord, I pray that you'd be with our country as decisions are made. And, and I pray that you would just allow us, Lord, to be together and uh, we would come back stronger as a result of this. 
Lord, we love you and we're thankful for you, thankful for allowing us to worship together, even if it means through social media or through the Internet. We're thankful, Lord, that uh, we have the ability to contact each other through that. We ask these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So again, it is good to be able to say a word to you and encourage you, and I pray that you would uh, maintain as best as you can a positive spirit and uh, anticipation of coming back together again and really being able to f fellowship together, hit the ground running, and uh, be able to worship it together again very soon. We're looking forward to that. God bless you, and we look forward to hearing from you again. It was a real surprise and a joy last night um, when Dan texted me that he was going to be coming home for Saturday night and a little bit of Sunday. Um, so it was just nice to, to catch up, and uh, it's great for him to be able to come through from the, you know, serving in the whole thick of this event down in Massachusetts, um, and just be able to take that little bit of respite to be with his family and reconnect. So let's continue to be praying for Dan, um, for his family, as they go through this time of separation. Um, and as he's going through what really is a stressful time down in Massachusetts. Um, but God is good. God provides. Um, God cares for him, uh, for cherishing the kids, and uh, for the whole church. So dealing now with the church. Okay, I mentioned before, I read out of Psalm 96, and there were some, some references to the sea and the forest and all of that. Um, how it reflects the majesty of God and the wonder of God. And, you know, by nature and by training, um, I love the environment, okay? Uh, or, uh, kind of a funny way to say that, I really enjoy being in the natural world and working in environmental stuff and studying things of, of nature, be it deer and animals or trees or soils or, you know, all of that stuff um, has always had a real, uh, uh, just a real sense of adventure for me. We'll put it that way. And just forgive me for a minute as I talk in a little bit of geek language for a while. Um, you know, we talk about nature, and this is not the purpose of the sermon. I, I'm going in a different direction. But as you look in, at nature, you know, it's amazing how everything kind of fits, fits together. All right, so you've got soil, it's there, you know, people call it dirt, whatever. The point being, it's got a purpose, and it's part of an ecosystem. So you've got this soil that's sitting there, and a little tree, a seedling, will sprout up from a seed. Eventually, over a period of time, it grows into a tree. Um, that tree then um, casts shade that allows other life forms to come up and live under that shade. It helps provide root systems and uh, organic layers on top of the soil that help clarify water so that when it rains, the water goes into the soil, trickles down or infiltrates down into the soil, um, becomes groundwater, which then can percolate back up and into streams. You know, you get the whole hydrogeologic cycle. Um, you know, a tree may have uh, be hit by lightning or, or a pest and it becomes weakened. You get woodpeckers that come in, drill a hole in the tree because they're looking for food. Um, eventually that tree dies, it tips over, um, it starts to rot. Other seedlings can land on top of that rotten log. They start to take off and grow as a tree. The whole thing starts over again. And what's really neat, as you, as you think about that, and that whole cycle, that whole ecology, ecological cycle of, of the forest, um, is how there are all sorts of different moving parts. There are all sorts of little pieces that by themselves seem insignificant, and yet, as part of a larger unit, if you will, um, really makes a beautiful, wonderful thing that, again, if you look at it and you study it or you just contemplate it, it is amazing how God put it all together. 
Um, and it really displays, if you sit there and you look at nature, if you look at different aspects of nature and how it works, it speaks to the detail that God works with and how He can take many different moving parts and mesh, mesh them together and put something, create something that serves His needs or glorifies His name or provides something that is of real value and joy. Um, so, that's enough of the talk about ecology and environmental stuff. If you get right down to it, his church is very much like that. His church, the church that he has created here, uh, Faith Bible Chapel, you know, we are created, the church has been created through Jesus Christ. All right? We are redeemed and restored by the work of Jesus Christ. We are called to love God. We are called to love one another. We're called to not just say, oh, I'm saved, happy day, I'm going to go do whatever, but instead to go live a life that is pleasing to God. A life where we follow God, where we are devoted to Jesus Christ. You know, every thought, word, and deed made captive to Him. And we're called to encourage and disciple one another. Okay? So, just like in the forest, you have all of these different components that are working together that in a way glorifies and demonstrates the power of God. The church also does that same kind of thing. We have many moving parts, many different ways that we support, encourage, help one another in order to glorify and honor God. And, you know, we as a church are given a mission, okay? In the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28, Okay, and we're going to look at verses 16 through 18. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to worship where Jesus had told them to go. And when he saw them, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, God has given us as a church a mission to go out into all the world and to share His name, to share His love, to disciple, okay? God's the one who's in the business of saving. We take the gospel, we share the gospel, we share Christ's love. God's the one, through Jesus Christ, who actually saves. But that being said, or with that being said, we then go on to disciple, to teach. So we carry forward, our mission is to carry forward the good news and the joy of Jesus Christ. And then, as God works in people's hearts and lives, for us to disciple and teach and encourage them to help them to grow also. That's our mission. To glorify God, to enjoy Him forever, to share that love And this mission is not something that is going to be accomplished by just one person. It is accomplished by the church. And in our case, that church, our local church, being Faith Bible Chapel. This is a team effort. Okay? With God as our head, it's a team effort for Faith Bible Chapel. So, you know, how do we do this? And we've heard lots about teams and and um, leadership and all of that sort of stuff. But teams come and teams go. They're good teams, they're bad teams, they can grow and prosper, or they can fail and wither up. Our question is, who are we as a team? Who are we as a church? Are we one that ultimately, or in practice, 
will fail and wither or you know just kind of get by or are we going to be a church that prospers and not for our own sake not for our own glory but for the glory of god so my question is this then what does it take for us to be a team as a church what does it take for us to be a good team that glorifies and honors God in our presence here, in our congregation, and as we go out into the community. Again, there are tons of books on leadership and building teams and mission and vision. I mean, there are people who make their career out of studying and saying you need to do X, Y, Z, take this approach. You know, I'm not looking at that today. I'm not going to do a deep dive into leadership or missions and visions and so on. What I really want to look at are some basically four basic points, four mindsets that each of us need to have in order to build our team into what God wants us to be. All right. So four key elements. Let me just summarize right now. Um, number one is to know your role. What is your role on the team? Number two is to put others first. Number three is to be true and to be faithful in what you do. And then number four is to be filled with love. So know your role, others first, be true, and love. This is one of the reasons that I'm talking about this right now is, um, you know, as we're separated, it's important for us, it's, it's, off, it's going to be awfully easy for us to sit there and say, um, you know what? I haven't been to church in a month and I haven't missed it that much. It's no big deal. You know, maybe this isn't where I need to be. Um, a team comes together even when it's apart. And again, we need to look at our own motivations, our own actions, our own attitudes um, and make sure that they are in line with or or in a manner that honors god so that's kind of what's motivated motivating me to talk about this a little bit today so god calls us together let's be together all right so number one know your role let's ex these are going to just be brief little points so know your role and the first sac scripture i'm going to read is corinthians chapter 12 and the whole section is 12 through 31. Um, and I'm only going to read uh, a shorter section of that. Uh, so let me just say, start with verse 12. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though all the parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free and we were all given the one spirit to drink now the body is not made up of one part but of many if the foot should say because i am not a hand i do not belong to the body it it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body and if the ear should say because i am not an eye i do not belong to the body it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body now I want to skip down a little bit to verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker, seem to be weaker, are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. 21. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop there. Read through that whole section. Um, 
it's important to see in verse 12 that the body is a unit and it has many parts. And each of those parts have a different role. Okay? Now as part of that, you know, if you read down through uh, verse 21, it implies that we need to have humility. Just because we may have one role within the church does not necessarily mean that it is more important and more critical than any other role within the church. So we cannot become puffed up with pride in what we're doing at the church. Okay? Everybody can have a role and those are going to vary and it all builds together to strengthen the church into or become that church, that one body. Um, if you look at verse 25, you know, it says the parts should have equal concern for each other. It's important for us, again, not to become puffed up in pride, but to care that the people who have other roles within the church, other gifts and talents that are being used within the church, that they're encouraged also. Okay? Um, and there, you know, there are a whole host of different gifts, whether it's administrative, whether it's preaching, teaching, music, worship, there are whether it's just helping or encouraging or praying, all of those different parts fit in to the church. And it's important for each one of us to sit there and pray, what is the role that I'm going to play? What is the role that God is calling me to play within the church? Um, prayerfully consider that as your home, you know, as you have this time of reflection. So, what is my part? What can I do? What gifts has God, or have God, has God given me that I can use to serve the church? And, you know, at the same time, you can sit there and say, well, look, I have these particular gifts. At the same time, I also want to, encourage you to seek to grow to grow in you know as you grow in knowledge of scripture as you grow in um, comfort of sharing of encouraging you know you may find yourself at point x at one point and then through growth through prayer through encouragement you may find yourself growing into other roles pray for that growth pray for that encouragement Again, don't let it be a prideful thing. But let it be a thing where God is leading you to what part you can play within the church. And the other thing is, and I've seen this in a number of different organizations, where somebody gets set, okay, this is my role, and they, all of a sudden it becomes their little kingdom. Or it become, they become really protective of that role. Um, we got to be careful that we don't let that pride start to build itself because that can start building walls within the church and hard feelings and divisions and so on. So know your role, encourage others within that realm, you know, within the church value what other people are doing seek to grow using the gifts that you have and don't become so protective or prideful in what you're doing uh, that it starts to set up divisions so know your role pray about what how god can use your gifts you know understanding what your gifts are and then how god can use those gifts here at church here at Faith Bible Chapel, and in his, in his larger worldwide church. Okay, so know your role. The second one that I had, and again, I'm just, some of these are just very familiar passages, um, and that's okay. 
Go back and, and contemplate them. Think about them. So the second point that I had is others first. All right, we've talked about roles, um, but we've got to be willing to put others first. So I'm going to look at uh, Philippians chapter 2, and you can read all uh, of section 1 or verse 1 through 11. Please do. Take that time to go through Philippians 2, 1 through 11. I'm going to focus really on 1 through 5 where it says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each one of you should not look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. And we recognize, we understand that Christ came, and although He was God, He willingly gave up His life for us to redeem us and return us to God. And as you go through that first section of Philippians, it says, you know, as you have received encouragement, as you have received joy or faith, share it with others, encourage others, put others first. You know, if we go around putting ourselves first and what matters in church the most is getting what we want you will never be a team we will never be a team Um, there will be division we need to be willing to humble ourselves and put others first as Christ did so if you think of a player on a team okay if you watch a soccer game or whatever and the coach may praise or encourage a particular player. Okay, there are two ways then that can go. The player's head, A, could start to swell. They become prideful. They become, their primary desire becomes, it's all about me and however many goals I score or people cheering for me, me being the hero, And what that can do is really start to build resentment and anger and frustration with the team. And although they may win, they're never really a team. They may not accomplish the overall goal. But on the other hand, that player then could take the different approach of, all right, the coach has encouraged me. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to take the approach of, of encouraging my teammates. I'm going to thank my teammates. I'm going to work with my teammates. I'm going to help them to be better players. As I have been encouraged, I'm going to encourage others. And that sort of approach can often really help the team to grow and to mature into a unit that's really there to perform. And in our case, to glorify and honor God. We need to remember that it is not all about us. We need to be willing to know that God is going to take care of our needs. God is going to provide for me. I can take and funnel my energies towards helping and encouraging somebody else. We need to look towards the needs of others and we need to have the mind of Christ with that. Number three, okay? Be true. Stick to your word. Stick to your faith. So be true. What do I mean by that? What I mean is in James chapter 2. Let's look at verses 14 through 18. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have, have faith but has no deeds. Can such faith save him? 
Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But some will say, You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. God wants us to be true to our faith. It's one thing to say that I have faith and then just go do whatever the heck you want. Sorry, that probably wasn't appropriate. But it's another thing to say I have faith, God has blessed me, and I'm going to use that and show it in how I live. Okay? You know, so often we say things, we do things, but then we never follow through. We say we're going to do something and then we don't follow through. We're all talk, we're no action. How many of you have said to somebody, they have some need, you see a need? And you say, I'll pray for you, I got you. Five minutes later, you have completely forgotten that they ever even had that issue and you never raise that petition to God. I've done it. It's awfully easy to do. We live in a hectic world. Um, and we get centered on the other things in our lives. But here's, you know, here's the fact, is we're part of a team. We're telling somebody that we're going to pray for them, and yet we never do. That doesn't lessen God's ability to deal with the situation and provide for that person that he's working with, you know, that's in that condition. But it does speak to what's our level of devotion to one another. So we need to show that we trust God not just by saying so, but by demonstrating it in our actions, in our attitudes, and our words. Um, we need to be faithful in the little things. If we say we're going to do something little here at church, we need to follow through. We need to do it. And do it for the glory of God. Again, not for our prideful selves, but we are doing it for God. And we are doing it for one another. We need to be willing to put ourselves out there to support and help others. Again, knowing that God is going to take care of us. So be true. If we commit to something, if we're going to say something, if we're going to pray for somebody, follow through. Be true. Lastly, we need to do all of this. We can't be mechanical. We need to love one another through it. All of this needs to be based on love. On love for God and love for for those around us. Has to be. 1 Corinthians 13. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. This is the passage that is right after what we started with, which was 1 Corinthians 12, which talked about all the, diff you know, the parts of the body and all the different spiritual gifts. And basically it's saying, look, if you do all of this other stuff and you're doing it mechanically, 
because, yeah, it's the right thing to do and I'm going to do it because it's the right thing to do and that's what I've been told to do. If you do it all mechanically, but you do it without love, then it doesn't matter. It's a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal, loud and annoying. All of this team stuff, all of this building the you know, the body of Faith Bible Chapel is meaningless if it is not based on love. And we, we need to remember that. It, as I've said before, it's not about us. It's not about building our ego. It's not about building our self-esteem or anything like that. It is about love. Love for each other. Love for God. Love for God and for each other is the glue that God has provided to hold us together as a unit. We need to remember that. And you know what? There are days when each one of us can be annoying. There are days when each one of us are going to stumble and fall and tick somebody off or say something stupid or, or ill-timed. We need to be willing to forgive. None of us are perfect in that way. We need to be willing to forgive, to come to one another honestly and lovingly and um, try to work through situations. That's what a team does. That's what a body does. It works to heal and to care. So we're not perfect. We're going to stumble at any one of those four points that I've talked about. You know, finding our role, knowing our role, um, putting others first, being true, loving each other. We're going to stumble there. But in humility, pray about where you are. Pray about your actions, your attitudes. Pray with compassion for those around you. And with love and encourage and help one another in whatever way you can. And then we can praise God and thank God and He can mold us into that, that team, if you will, that body of believers that can be effective in sharing His love, carrying forward the good news of Jesus Christ and then discipling each other and those who come to know Christ. It's not about us. It's about loving God and loving one another. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, pray for one another this week. Again, pray for one another. Lift one another up. Call somebody. Text somebody. Encourage them. And know that God's got us. He holds us and He gives us the strength to do all of this. So let's pray in closing. Father God, we thank You, Lord, that we are the body of Christ. That You have redeemed us and brought us together. That Father, You have created us as one body with many parts. Intricate, um, fine-tuned, just, you know, working together in order to praise and to glorify and to honor You and to share Your love with the world. Father, help each one of us to look at what our role is and how we fit in, and how you can use the talents and gifts that you have blessed us with. Father, help us to, to humbly serve others and to put others first, knowing, Lord, that you will care for us. Help us to be true, and Lord, not to just be people of words, but to be people of faith and action in all aspects of our lives. And Lord, help us to base all of these things on love, 
knowing that You have loved us beyond all measure and that You hold us in Your hands. So that as we have been loved, Lord, may we be able to take that and share it with others. To glorify and honor You, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in all things. Thank You, Father. We praise You. Keep us safe until the time we come together. And may that be soon. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Have a good week, folks.